Attention! Although my content is usually family-friendly and suitable for all ages, Phoenix Wright Justice for All is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB content rating system, and as such, the videos in this Let's Play may contain blood, mild violence, and or suggestive themes. So, viewer discretion is advised. The last time we heard this music, we were ah, killed. How did I get into this mess? Oh no, we can get killed, we got hit in the head. That's far enough! You can't run forever, Mr. Phoenix Wright! <laughs> it's the same! Wh what have I done wrong? I cannot allow you to go on like this! B but I'm just a simple defense attorney! Silence! You are no longer worthy of your title! Ouch. I've had this dream before, someplace, some time ago. As if this day was written into my destiny. Today, I'll stand in court as a lawyer. To prove a killer innocent. Okay, we're crazy. That's not, no. We're crazy. Why? I mean, we need Maya back, but I don't want a serial killer on the loose. He's not a serial yeah, killer. Not a serial he's, killer. He's, he's a guy who hired a hitman. Yeah. And we had no choice, really. <laughs> so stupid. Are you just going to be like, well, yeah, he did it, and then Maya dies? Is that what you want? No, but there has to be a way for both of them. I don't know. The truth shall come out, but maybe we can, like, disconnect his uh, satellite connection with... With the dude, the killer, because he's just kind of waiting, like, okay, are you, are you dead? Are you, are you, oh, okay. The killer is listening in somehow. Yeah, somehow. March 23rd, 9.43 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. Hello, this is Phoenix Wright. You don't look so well, dude. You're gonna prove me not guilty today, right? Oh, you know, just... In court, you know. Let's brandy. bring some... Bring the brandy. Bring the brandy. <laughs> if you please, Mr. Lawyer. Remember, it's not just me. Your precious friend's life is riding on today's verdict, too. Arr. Now listen up. You better get on guard a guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime bag and not guilty, I'll never forgive you either. Or ever. Maya. Phoenix. Phoenix! That's... Yep. M Mia! Maya! How's Maya? I don't know. You don't know? She hasn't tried to channel me since yesterday. Are you serious? I guess not. Mia, what? what? What am I supposed to do? Well, like I said, for a lawyer, the worst of times are when you have to force your biggest smiles. Terrible advice. B but You can't give up. There's still some hope left. Stop it, please. There's nothing left. Not here, not anywhere. Come on, Gumshoe. Ah, it's that accursed on guard again! Will you leave me alone? Look, don't call me anymore. It's be I mean it. Or You're really mean, pal. Ah, Gumshoe! I'm really, really sorry. He was right! Yay! Where are you? They let me join the investigation team and we're chasing after the killer, pal. Oh, sweet. Then, you have some sort of lead? Sorry, but right now we've got zero leads on the guy. But we're not going to give up! Gumshoe. Until the trial is over, until the verdict is handed down, we're going to do everything we can and find the killer. If we can get Maya out, then you can get Ongar the guilty verdict That's what I think pal. is gonna happen. Because Maya's like, listen, if this guy is out being a scumbag forever, then I'm not gonna forgive you. So, she's not gonna yeah. even wanna come back anyway. That's true. I could do that if they found Maya first. You got that? So you have to do whatever you can to make the trial last longer. Let's see. We're gonna be like in the middle of the court and he's gonna be like, No, this guy is totally innocent! Boom! And then like the minute we get the call, it's like, Kill this guy! And like, he's just instantly swap. Basically, I have to make the trial last longer? If you go at Mr. Edgeworth with everything you've got, then you two can draw it out. Oh, now I get it. 
start doing dances? I believe in you, pal. You and Mr. Edgeworth could do it. So, believe in us. We're going to give it all we've got, just like you. Got it. Thanks, Gumshoe. Hey, Phoenix. You understand now, don't you? You have something money will never be able to buy. Friendship. We're getting a little cheesy now. <laughs> it's the strongest weapon in the world and you have it in abundance. Yeah! Yeah! The new superpower of teamwork. That is not how it goes, but that is fine. I thought that Looks like we're coming to the end. I have to make the trial last as long as I can. Gumshoe will come through, I know it. So basically, press everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just press everything. <laughs> March 23rd, 10 a.m. Sharp, District Court, courtroom number three. At least we probably won't have what's-his-face uh, on guard on the stand. Probably not. The defendant almost never testifies anyways. Yeah. Court is now in session for the trial of Matt on guard. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Now, as I recall, we concluded yesterday's session with a big mystery on our hands. The mystery being what exactly was Miss Adrian Andrews' role in this murder? That is to say, is she really connected to the crime itself? Mr. Edgeworth, if you would please inform the court of today's proceedings. Adrian Andrews. She forged evidence that threw suspicion onto Mr. Ongard. And then proceeded to escape the crime scene by wearing a nickel samurai costume. The guilt of these actions are those from which she cannot escape. Hmm, then you're saying that she is guilty after all? I'm not finished, Your Honor. Miss Andrews has nothing to do with committing the actual murder. I would like to direct the court's attention to this card. What is that? It looks like a shell. This is the calling card of a certain assassin. Uh, assassin, you say? Yes, Juan Corrida was killed by a professional assassin. And the person who hired the assassin, his client, so to speak, is Matt Ongard. Well, I mean, just I bust agree him out with right all of that. Yeah. What, what a surprising turn of events. I will say, I am glad that they finally were like, what if the person you're trying to prove innocent isn't actually innocent? And they had to do it in the most cruel way imaginable. Yeah, well, that's okay. I would think it's become commonplace by now, Your Honor. We're not going to kill off my doctor. That's what next game is for. <laughs> See, I, I don't know. It could be. I know what's going on this time. So I know that everything Edgeworth has said is true. But we still have to hold out as long as we can. At least until Maya's safe and sound. I wonder how the trial will, will turn out today. Mia's stink face gets me every time from the side where she's just like, mm. like I'm trying to imagine her like glaring at Edgeworth like, what in the world? She's just like, mm. <laughs> Now then, please call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls the defendant's mentor, Mr. Will Powers, to the stand. Really? Now, I forgot that Will Powers was his mentor. Kind of. Sort of. of. Now, Basically, he was there. Now then, witness, your name and occupation, please. Uh, okay, I'm, uh, Will Powers. I'm a poor, underpaid action star. And what is your relation to the defendant? Well, that's... I guess I'm sort of a lousy mentor to him in a way, yeah. Um, Mr. Powers, please, you don't need to put yourself down so much. Oh, uh, sorry. Well, but I'm just kind of a nothing sort of guy. On the night of the murder, you visited the defendant's room. Is this correct? Y yes I didn't know that. Um, but you know, I didn't actually get to see Matt when I went. All you need to do is answer what you're asked. Now then, I would like you to please testify about when you went to Mr. Ongard's room. Okay, sure. I think he literally brought him in to just be like, We need a witness! <laughs> just talk for five hours so we can have time! <laughs> okay. Visit to Matt's room. After the award ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. Matt was standing there in front of his room, still in his nickel samurai costume. But with his helmet off. He was talking with someone. At first I thought it was the bellboy. Ooh! I watched the two of them for a while, but then I gave up and went back. I had guests with me that night, and I couldn't make them wait for me. Good for you, but also good that you saw the two <laughs> of them. Hmm, nothing sounds out of place in Mr. Power's testimony. Everybody loves tomato juice! <laughs> and talking with the bellboy is no big deal. 
If one assumes that the person Mr. Ongard was speaking with was an ordinary bellboy, what are you implying? <laughs> well, Mr. Wright, let's have your cross-examination, shall we? Looks like we're in for another sticky situation. Huh? A trap. Can't you smell it, Phoenix? But for us to find out more, we're just gonna have to charge in head first, right? Yep! Mia Fey, Queen of the Stink Face. She is. <laughs> After the award ceremony, he went by its name. How? I feel like. I still think you mentioned this. Very sad. You mentioned this is sad, but you don't mention, like, the other cross examination music is sad, which. And that one is way more sad. I'm trying to remember what the other cross examination Like the. Dun 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 dun. Do, 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 oh, from the first do, game? No, from this. Like, oh. where it goes like... Oh, I don't remember. I just oh, I'll point it out next time. Okay. Because every game has two cross-examination themes. Um, Moderato and Elvira. Okay. Because every game has two cross-examination themes. Um, Moderato and Allegro. Oh. Allegro. <laughs> Allegro Presto from Rayman. The Defendant's Room? Why did you go there? Well, I'm his mentor. Like a big brother, sort of. And I wanted to say congrats. Yeah. W what's wrong? Why did you stop? <laughs> Mr. Wright! What? what is it? You... You're going to try to trick me into a corner, aren't you? Huh? Uh, I know I'm just a poor, underpaid action star, but... Of all the people! But I... I'm not the killer! Um, um no, no one, one said you were, Mr. Powers. <laughs> no, please, don't trick me! Every time you do your warrior feat, the witness suddenly turns into the bad guy. The witness also usually cries or... Every cries. time? <laughs> witness, I will personally talk to the defense at a later time. So for now, please kindly cooperate and continue with your testimony. Oops, sorry. Would you say Edgeworth is more of a tea person or a coffee person? Tea, absolutely tea. tea. Okay. So he went to the defendant's room, and then... I wonder how many drinks... <laughs> hey, wait a minute! Wait, and how did I suddenly turn into the bad guy here? He would drink... The blackest of teas. Edgeworth? Edge wait, he would be the one who, like, leaves the tea bag in for, like, five minutes too long, and he's just like, the bitter. It's <laughs> lovely. Like, you know. Wow. <laughs> Let me taste the bitter. Matt was standing there in front of his room, still in his little samurai costume. All right. Are you sure that was Matt Ongard? Yeah, I'm sure. He wasn't wearing the nipple samurai mask then. Oh, that's easy. If that's the case, then he really can't be mistaken. Also, his hair was up, and I saw a bunch of scars on his eye. That was kind of weird. That was weird. weird. <laughs> and what was the defendant doing standing in front of his own room? I'm still trying to imagine all these places where it's like Matt on guard, like, goes to, like, his hairstyles. So it's like, hey, so I was thinking maybe you could have, like, a hot new look. No! No, I need to have my hair over my eye. Uh, but, dude, you've had that haircut for three years. No! <laughs> I need to have it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Or, like, he's trying to cut his hair, and he's like, So, uh, bro, why do you have, like, five scars off the crotch of your Oh, you know, it's a birthmark! Aha! <laughs> like, I'm, uh -huh. like, I'm just trying to think of, like, how ridiculous it would be for some of these people. First, I thought he was talking to the bellboy. At first? What do you mean by that? Well, he was in a bellboyish uniform, and he had a bottle of juice on a tray. Sounds like an ordinary bellboy to me. Um, yeah, but I didn't think he was a normal bellboy. And why was that? Um, why did I think that, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Sorry, but I can't remember right now. Sorry. I guess I'm gonna have to be wait patiently on this one. I still sort of like the idea that Phoenix Wright has dreams, like, that the judge is just like, oh, like Zeus <laughs> above him. <laughs> hey, that was a really cool cutscene every time I saw that. You also were just laughing through the whole thing, even though it was a serious situation. It's so, it was so funny. <laughs> Alright. I don't know. I feel I, like you are not taking the case as seriously as a no, lot of people at no. all. I think part of it is it's like, they're not going to kill off their secondary main character. You don't I'm know that. sure. I'm they killed sure. off Mia. <laughs> okay, but she was also only in one case before they killed her off. It's She's, more. But she was one of the main characters. For one case, and then she got killed off. It's more like Maya's already been in like two games. They're not gonna kill her off. If they did, all of the games after this would be like midquels or prequels, because I think she's in other games. Maybe. She, she's be. in the latent crossover, but that doesn't necessarily yeah. take place after the game. Okay. 
You saw the two of them, the bellboy and the defendant, together, correct? Yeah, the bellboy just wanted to say congrats. What? Now, while you were watching the two of them, did you notice anything strange? The bellboy saying congrats? Um, you know I did feel something weird. I think it was because Matt... Well, he gave the bellboy a tip. A tip? But that's a perfectly normal thing to do. Was it like a large tip? Like, here's 50 bucks type of tip? <laughs> or was it like, yeah. Here's, 50, here's five bucks. Go see a Star War. <laughs> a Star War? <laughs> Some people will get that reference. Oh. So, how long did you watch the two of them? Uh, not more than a minute or two, I think. My guests with me that night, I couldn't make them wait for me. Thanks! So who are these guests you're talking about? You guys, of course! You and Maya and Little Pearl! I thought it would be really rude since I invited you guys if I disappeared on you. So I- I still think it's so weird that we were able to be a lawyer for this case, even though we were technically at the scene. It's... Like, I think that's super weird for a lot of these game cases, is it's like- It's Japanifornia's law system, it's I know, different. but it's weird! There is a the, lot of strange the, the, You're allowed to get hung up on things like, wait, that contradicts something that's established in another game. Mm -hmm. But not like, wait, that's not how our court system works. So, yeah, it's not our court system. Yeah, that's not. <laughs> so I went back to my seat pretty soon after seeing Matt in the hallway. This is like squeezing water from a stone. It's probably pointless to press further. Do you remember this incident? Did Mr. Powers leave his seat that night? I don't remember that happening at all. Maya was making such a racket in her hyper state, I ended up focusing on her. I see. In any case, from his story, he probably wasn't gone for very long. Yeah, he was probably like, hey, I need to go take a bathroom break and saw him on the way. Or, like, on the way back. Well, you know, he went to the room specifically to congratulate Matt. Oh, but he didn't get into the room, apparently. Right, because Matt picture. and the bellboy were talking for too long, and he's like, okay, I can't keep them waiting. Yeah. That makes sense, too, because Maya was probably like, Burgers, 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 food! And like just inhaling everything and being just like, This was okay, at the back. stage show. Before. Oh, never mind. Then she was probably like, Save away! And like you were. Yeah. yeah. Talking to someone. Yeah, we actually have to press statements multiple times sometimes oh. now. At first? What do you mean by that? I didn't think he was a normal bellboy. And why was that? Um, why did I think that, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Hey, wait a second. Actually, Mr. Powers, only a few minutes ago you stated... Um, you know, I did feel something weird. I think it was because Matt, well, he gave the bellboy a tip. Oh, that would've been hard to find. Could it be that you felt something strange about the tip-giving incident itself? Ah! Oh, yeah, that's it! You really know your job! Hmm, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. This bellboy, he wasn't an ordinary one, was he? Perhaps we should let the witness tell us. Very well. Mr. Powers, please amend your testimony. Y you mean about the bellboy, right? Matt gave the bellboy a tip. Good job! <laughs> so he gave the bellboy a tip. What's so strange about that? Oh, uh, well, you see, Matt's not a poor penny pincher like me. I was trying to figure out how much it was because the tip really shocked me. Here's a thousand dollars! How much it was? But that's when something even more surprising happened. The bellboy was putting the tip he got in his pocket, and that's when I got my first good look at the guy's face. I was really shocked. Hmm, I'm afraid I don't follow at all. It sounds like Mr. Powers was surprised twice by the event. I wonder which one of his shocking moments I should ask about. The bellboy's face or Ongard's tip. I mean, we already know what the dude looks like. And we already know that it's the same dude that we found, so we should really ask about the tip. Cause you know, if it's like, hey, uh, yeah, you gave me my tomato juice, here's, here's 50 bucks. Even though we're trying to make it go as long as possible. Uh, I don't know. Cause we, we already know about the bellboy as the players. Phoenix does not. He doesn't oh, know okay. it's the same bellboy. And you have to do both of them at some point anyways. What was so shocking about the bellboy's face, Mr. Powers? Well, he wasn't exactly a boy, more like an old Gramps. Ahem, <clears throat> I hope you know that discrimination towards old men is a no-no in my court. No, no, that's not what I meant at all. How old's the judge, I wonder? We never know. In the smack middle of the guy's face, there was a line of stitches. A line of stitches? Oh, on Shelly the Killer? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it went straight from the tippy top of his head to the bottom of his chin. Almost like if that thread snapped, all the stuff in his head would come spilling out. Ugh. Ah! He was there, at Hungard's house. He was that butler! Wait, oh, that was a scar line? Yeah, it was stitches. Oh. What did you think it was? I would need to get- can you pull up the court record so I can see his face again? Because I- I literally- I didn't notice it at all. How? I didn't <laughs> notice it at all. I thought it was like either the worst case of wrinkles or he purposely painted a line on. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't notice it because the bottom part looks like a chin. The middle part looks like, oh, it's just like a nose line. Okay, the bottom part I feel like is the most obviously it's a stitch. No, but like the forehead, I was like, that's kind of weird, but... Wow, how did you... I didn't notice. I'm dumb, I know. What is it, Mr. Wright? Uh, uh, nothing, your honor. So that means On Guard was talking with the killer then. If that fact were to be exposed, On Guard would be declared guilty in a blink. Phoenix, you have to play dumb here. Pretend you don't know anything. Okay. Yes, Chief. You sure you don't have something you would like to say, Mr. Wright? Huh? Um, what did you just say, Your Honor? Never mind. Nothing, Mr. Wright, nothing. I thought he was gonna give us a penalty. We're just going around and around in circles. Now then, Mr. Powers, please continue with your testimony. Edgeworth's like, I know. <laughs> I know that you know, you know. Yep. Okay. Alright, let's ask about tip. some tip now. How big's that tip? The defendant is a huge star. He can afford to give generous tips, wouldn't you agree? Um, sure. But giving him that much was maybe a little too much, I think. A little too much? Would you please clarify for the court about how much would you say the defendant gave the bellboy? Honestly, I don't know. I can't even begin to guess. And why is that? Because he gave the bellboy a really, really fat roll of cash. A ROLL OF CASH?! They're all just 100 or like one dollar bills. It's like, really, it's just like... Twenty dollars put in dollar bills, like, rolled up. It has to be like fifty dollars. Probably, yeah. <laughs> ah, well, how interesting. That certainly was a very generous tip, wasn't it? For tomato a, juice. A very fat roll of cash that can hardly be called a tip, Your Honor. Hmm. The judge is beginning to look awfully suspicious of us. Raise an objection, wait and see! <laughs> um, well... If we raise an objection, he'll be like, yup, tell us everything you know. But if we just wait and see, he may just be like, whatever. There's nothing I can really object to here. I mean, who can argue that a fat roll of money isn't really odd? Hmm, so supposing that roll of cash was not a tip, then what was it? Oh, hang on. Let's go they back. Catch up? Maybe. Yeah, they do. The defendant is a superstar! That kind of tip is typical fare for people like him! Are you saying that all superstars are super spenders? Well, if I could receive large rolls of cash by simply bringing people things on a tray, then why on earth am I standing around here prosecuting? He's got a point. I don't even get paid, let alone rolls of cash for all my hard work. He doesn't get paid at all? How is he living? <laughs> I don't know. We didn't. We never really find out. Hmm. So if that wasn't a tip, then what was it? Payment, Your Honor. Payment? Isn't it obvious? For the murder of Mr. Juan Corrida. Then... Then the bellboy the witness saw? Yes, he was the assassin. Oh, poor Mr. Powers! He's like standing like half like... Like a little bunny. Yeah! <laughs> well, he does wear a rabbit mask on the kids show. <laughs> so, yeah. Hold your horses now! Mr. Edgeworth, you don't have any proof of this, do you? Have I ever been unprepared to support my claims, Your Honor? I have here the card Shelly DeKiller left at the scene of the crime. Shelly DeKiller. He is the person the police's special investigations team has been chasing for ages. I am certain that the person the witness saw was this very assassin, Shelly DeKiller. Really? What's wrong, Mr. Powers? No, nothing. Something just clicked in my head and I think I just figured something out. Oh? Actually, I saw that bellboy again later on that night. What? Well, I mean, that helps. 
Mr. Powers, please testify. Tell us what you saw. Yes, sir. Right away. Oh, boy. He's getting way too into this, isn't he? The mm -hmm. second time. Ooh. This time, I was in that hallway because I had to go to the bathroom. I was right! And that's when that bellboy I saw earlier came out of the room. Of course, when I say room, I mean Juan Corita's room. Um, why didn't you tell us about this sooner? <laughs> why? I feel like... Because he was there at the scene of the crime, and they wouldn't need to ask him. He would have been like, Hey, so I saw this dude get a bunch of cash and then go into the room WHERE THE DUDE WAS DEAD?! This is... This is so dumb! <laughs> Why didn't they ask Mr. Powers anything?! I Why bet they did! I bet he just didn't bring it up, because he's scatterbrained. Now that I think about it, that bad boy did seem kinda out of place. Yeah, so he had to be the assassin. I'm sure of it. I mean... You mean... Thank you very much. That is all we need for now. Huh? But I'm not done. There's still more. Let us first establish that the bellboy was truly Mr. DeKiller. Then we shall see. Hmm. So the bellboy came out of the victim's room. And if that bellboy really was the assassin, then I think the answer is fairly obvious. That would be correct, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, I believe it's your turn to entertain and make us laugh. <laughs> this is no laughing matter. It was so a prosecutor awkward. and a defense attorney walk into a bar, and they <laughs> sat down to get drinks. And then they were like, hey, what would you like? And the defense attorney was like, I'll have a beer. And then the prosecutor was like, objection! You're not 21. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> All right, we I, need to provide entertainment. I think I'm going to end the episode off there. It's going to be a... <laughs> With the amazing ending joke we had. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we can top that. And also... We have had a lot of long episodes. So long episodes. And this tr this is the longest trial period we've encountered yet. So we're going to need to break it up. Thanks for watching, everybody. Okay. Tune in next time. We're going to cross continue cross-examining Will Powers and hopefully drag out the trial a bit longer. Hope to see you then. Until we meet again, have a great day and God bless.